There are quite a lot of successful light rail projects in the world where everything is nice, modern and very expensive. Of course, many other cities would like to have something similar, but unfortunately not everyone can afford it. But is it really that hopeless and without a billion euros or US dollars there is nothing to expect? Well, it turns out that there are some options and it is possible to build a fully functional system at a much lower cost. Long story short, we are moving to Mendoza, Argentina. On the one hand, Argentina in general is a huge and quite developed country with gorgeous nature and delicious cuisine. Once I even had an opportunity to enjoy it by myself. But on the other hand, their economy is struggling and because of high inflation and regular defaults, life in the country is quite difficult. Mendoza is the center of 1 million metro area and the capital of the region with the same name, known worldwide for its wine production. There are plenty of vineyards around and also the Andes Mountains and the Chilean border are close by. Just from the pictures the city is quite pleasant and green and there is something to tell about in terms of public transport. It all began there quite classically with the horse-drawn trams in the late 19th century. Then the tram became electric. Later there was an unsuccessful experiment with a trolley bus on one route and the tram continued to operate. It all looked quite pretty and this tram car, by the way, is very similar to those that are still operating in Lisbon, Portugal. Then the second appearance of the trolley bus happened and a few years later the tram system was completely closed and all the wagons were scrapped. It was a decision of central government and at the same time tram service was closed throughout Argentina. Trolley buses were also bought in a wholesale manner for everyone, 700 units at once from different European cities, most of which ended up in the capital Buenos Aires and the rest in several other cities, including Mendoza. Since then, in Mendoza have been used trolley buses from Germany, Japan, Canada and the USSR. The Soviet trolley buses made by ZIU factory were a separate anecdote altogether because they were received in exchange for a batch of Argentine wine. I guess Argentina was lacking in real money at the time, while the Soviets were trying to push their miracle products at least somewhere abroad. I wonder who was more screwed in this situation, what do you think? Used trolley buses regularly broke down and generally didn't last long. For example, the first batch of Mercedes trolley buses imported in year 58 was completely scrapped within 5 years. With the next generations the situation was no better and some of the units were simply dismantled for spare parts so that the rest ones could be repaired. When the donor parts ran out, the entire batch was scrapped and the next one was brought in. Hit the like button if your city does the same crap. Against this picture, this one from Zollingen, Germany, looks especially lucky as it was bought back after 20 years in Argentina to be restored for the local museum. And the city's latest purchase so far has been a dozen of low-floor trolley buses, which this time they decided to order new ones from local Argentine manufacturer the Matter Fair factory. However, this purchase was literally the last one. Years of trying to assemble one functional trolley bus out of three broken ones ended with transport company's financial situation getting worse and worse. As a result, in 2016 the city council decided to liquidate the company and to establish a new one with a blackjack and without debt. Trolley bus operations stopped. It was restored a year later, but in 2021 everything stopped again and this time for good. Despite having the largest trolley bus network in Argentina, the city decided to completely eliminate it and to switch to diesel and battery buses. Mostly to diesel ones. And now we finally got to the point for which I actually started this story. And the main question so far is... Metro trams, really? You guys couldn't even repair your trolley buses properly. But the unbelievable is close by. In the early 2000s, the city began to develop plans for a new urban rail transportation system. At first, they thought about a real commuter train, but then decided to make something more like a tram and, following the usual pattern, to buy a used wagon somewhere abroad. For laying the tracks of the new tram, they plan to use the remains of the old railway infrastructure. Of course, the rails themselves had to be laid from scratch because the old ones still had the incorrect track gauge, but at least there was a ready-made place to do it, which is also very useful. The railways in Mendoza used to be very well developed. 
all the nearby towns had their own small stations and the central station served trains to Buenos Aires which is about 1000 kilometers away and a narrow gauge railway through the Andes to Chile which reached the port of Valparaiso. All of this was a legacy of the former glory of the early 20th century when the large investments and millions of migrants from Europe flowed into Argentina. Thanks to this, Argentina was among the world's top 10 countries in terms of GDP per capita for 20 years in a row and at one moment even surpassed the United States in this respect. But then the country was dragged into a whirlwind of political instability and populism and everything gone. Now Argentina is somewhere around 65th place in this ranking. The railways in Mendoza began to lose popularity over time and gradually collapsed. First was stopped passenger traffic to Chile, then the freight train stopped going there and in 1992 departed the last passenger train to Buenos Aires. By the way, now the train to the capital is supposed to be revived, but so far it hasn't gone beyond discussions. And since then the entire city's railways facilities have been abandoned. For example, this is how the central station looked like. Long story short, the city had a basis for developing a rail transport. At first, they looked at wagons in Stuttgart and Hanover, Germany, but eventually came to an agreement with San Diego, USA, where they bought 11 used Siemens Duvac U2 wagons for $300,000 each. These cars were built in the 1980s and they look like a cross between an electric train and a tram. The wagon is 24 meters long, has two sections with a joint in the middle and two cabins and doors on both sides of the body, which makes it possible to operate without the turning loops at the end stops. By the way, in San Diego these wagons were operated in three coupled units, which makes it a real train capable of carrying almost 800 passengers at a time. Construction work started in 2009. The project was estimated to cost about 15 and a half million dollars and for this money they had to build a 12 and a half kilometer line from Mendoza Central Station south to the neighboring town of Maipo. In addition to laying new tracks they also had to build a contact network which had never existed in Mendoza before because everything was pulled by steam and diesel locomotives. Here is a photo from Belgrano Avenue near the Central Station during the construction works where you can still see the remains of the old tracks, narrow and super wide, which were to be replaced by standard ones. And this is quite interesting, cause seems that they used to run regular trains right in the middle of the avenue. In February 2012, the first wagon ceremoniously traveled the first meters on the new tracks. For this occasion, there was even a delegation from San Diego. But the construction was still ongoing, so full-scale passenger service started only six months later in October, just in time for the 100th anniversary for the previous launch of the Mendoza tram. By the way, the local press actively promotes the worship of a strong boss. The governor enters the room, the governor looks at the validator, the governor talks to the press, the governor looks dreamily out of the window. Oh, and here is the picture of a tram. Moreover, a new tram repair depot was opened near the Maipo station, which took about six months to complete and cost a little bit over two million US dollars. It's quite small, but it looks neat and clean in the photos and in the Google reviews. Yes, the depot has Google reviews. Say it's very cute and well organized. By the way, Maipu is one of the local winemaking centers and the vineyard starts just a few blocks from the depot. However, judging by these photos, there are still problems with maintenance and the trams eventually turn into a rusty real estate somewhere under a fence. This may have been influenced by the case when a large shipment of spare parts was arrested at the border due to customs clearance problems. Trying to solve this problem, the management of Mendoza Transport Authority went all the way to the president of Argentina. She even signed a decree demanding to solve the problem, but still the mess lasted for more than two years. I think now you understand why Argentina's economy is not in a very good shape. In 2019 the line was extended another 5.5 kilometers north to the town of Las Eras. After that the system took on its current shape, so let's take a look at the results together. The nicest section is on the central Belgrano Avenue, where the trams run right in the middle next to a bike lane, making it look very much like a normal city tram. The advantage of double-sided wagons was used as much as possible and stops were made on the central platform between the tracks. 
As a reminder of the old days, various historical artifacts have been preserved here, such as old railway semaphores near the station. And when the avenue ends, it becomes more like a normal railroad with rails, sleepers and no extra decoration. Also, thanks to the use of railway heritage, the Mendoza Metro tram is almost completely separated from other transport, which helps to keep the schedule. However, shit happens sometimes. Now there are about 60 trams in the city and they run every 10 minutes on weekdays, carrying 13 million passengers per year. Whether this number is large enough is a topic for discussion in the comments. For a comparison, the LRT system of Salt Lake City with three lines carries about 10.6 million passengers per year. And by the way, I have an idea to make a video about it too. The website of the local transportation department shows that on weekdays trams start operating at 5 am and finish only after midnight. However, recently residents have been complaining about the overcrowding during peak hours, so seems that it's time for the city to think about operating coupled wagons on the line. The cost of the trip is 20 US cents for a single ticket. And if you buy a ticket for 80 trips, each of them will cost half the price. Of course, the actual prices are stated in Argentina in pesos, but the exchange rate changes so often that any figure will soon become irrelevant, so that's why I'm using US currency here. However, I haven't found anywhere how much this covers the total expenses of operations, so if you happen to know, please write in the comments. All the tickets are valid for both the trams and city buses and allow a 90 minute ride with the two transfers during this time. By the way, since 2019 Mendoza has had a single electronic ticket called SUVE, which now covers 97% of payment. To be more precise, it has been the only one since 2021 and before that there were two systems in the city in parallel, the other was called Red Bus. But in 2020 Red Bus was said goodbye and all its 300,000 and customers were gradually transferred to SUVE cards during the year. To give you a little bit more understanding, Red Bus was a smaller local company and SUVE is a large Argentine operator that works in almost all major cities of the country. So this is another story about centralization and a strong governmental structure. Locals say that the metro tram has performed quite well and the residents are generally happy with it. The city authorities also liked it and have already planned to expand the network. And not just planned, but already announced a tender for the construction of new tracks. In the north, the line is to be extended to the city airport and in the south, they will build a line to the town of Luján de Cuyo. In general, it's about 10 kilometers of tracks and one more route. The starting cost of the project is 26 million US dollars and it's to be financed by the Inter-American Development Bank headquartered in Washington DC. By the way, if all goes well, Mendoza will become the first Argentine city with a rail transportation to the airport. But before that, the city authorities will have to relocate the favela residents who are interfering with the laying of new tracks. And to ensure that the new lines have something to operate on, San Diego has already begun transport about 40 more used trams, this time of a more modern model. This is the story. So Mendoza screwed up a lot, but at the same time they managed to launch a kind of a city train on a fairly small budget which connected the city with the surrounding areas quite well. And this system can be expanded and developed further, laying new tracks and operating longer trains. And I hope that the city of Mendoza will move in this direction and treat trams better than trolleybuses before.